Glory to God. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a, a choice to rejoice. Power to choose. Amen. Amen. Psalm 19. We got a lot of work to cover. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 19. Is everybody there? <laughs> oh, yes. Psalm 19. In verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. And there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle or dwelling place place for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. Its rising is from one end of heaven, and its circuit to the other end, and there is nothing hidden from its heat or its presence. Heavens are a sign. He's talking about, this is important, because this is a sign. He's saying, listen, my voice is in heaven. It's written. You can see everything. If you understand what the voice of God is in heaven. Not that there's the voice that's here, but he's got a written voice in heaven. Heavens are a sign of the voice of God for all men, whether they believe or they don't. <laughs> it's a sign. In other words, you cannot mistake the signs of warning and events established by the stars, the moon, the sun, the constellations, the planets, they coincide with the seven feasts of the Lord. This is so that there is no mistake or no mistaking of God's times and seasons. Again, it talks about the, the sun. Uh, it's like the, it represents the son of God coming out of the king's chamber, and no one can hide from his presence or his judgment. And this is what he's talking about. In verse 7, look at this here. He expresses his law, testimony, statutes, commands, and the fear of the Lord will produce righteousness to avoid this judgment or wrath. Remember, God always comes with conviction, chastening, judgment, and then wrath. Conviction, chastening, judgment, then wrath. In verse 7. The law of the Lord is what? Perfect. What's it converting? The soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise is simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More are to be desired today than gold. Yes, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your, your servant is what? Warned. In other words, he's saying, if you don't get the understanding of this, you may fall into trouble. Your servant is warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Then he says, who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults or deceptive desires. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. The same thing, deceptive desires. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Again, he expresses the laws and testimonies, statutes and commands and the fear of the Lord to produce righteousness to avoid his judgment and wrath. He acknowledges that sin will be the target 
of God's wrath. Does everybody get it? Sin is the target of God's wrath on an individual at a set time placed by him. The psalmist is looking for God's acceptance to avoid his wrath and judgment. That's what the psalm is about. In Psalm 50. Verse 1. Psalm 50 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. The mighty one, God, the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to its going down. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God will shine forth. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him. And it shall be very temptuous all around him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together to me, he says, thus who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge gathering the saints those and those who made a covenant saints are christians those who made covenants are jews he's saying gather them all together the heavens declare his signs of righteousness and judgment because he is the judge amen and in revelation chapter 12 Tonight's teaching is called the sign of Revelation 12. Because this is we are, where we are at right now. The sign of Revelation 12. In verse 1 it says, Now a great sign appeared in the heaven. Now a great sign, meaning express of utmost importance. Utmost importance. This great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to what? Give birth. Again, this great sign expresses your utmost importance in alignment of constellations. Virgo and Leo. The sun, the moon, the planets of Mercury and Mars and Venus and Jupiter. He's expressing something very important because these are signs that is imaging a picture that is happening. Now, before I explain all of this, and this is all coming, this is all coming together this month, 2017, where this will be seen from Jerusalem. Again, before I explain everything, please understand the timing of God in all events of 2017. We just got finished with the Shemit and the uh, four blood moons. Amen? It was completed. We, we are coming to the end of the Jubilee year. Amen? That's being completed also. And that's all in this month. We just got an election of a new president for the people, a praying president as a Christian. That's a big change. It's amazing how the left always says what the people want, but ignore that the people elected this president. <laughs> They're always saying what their people want, but the people don't want what they want, what they have. Amen? Amen? We don't want what they have because they're blood-sucking evil. And that's what it's the truth. That's why they're called the left. They're satanic ritual abusers. And their agenda is to destroy this country. But they can't because God has another plan. 
That's why there's a big fight going on. Amen? Obama's election brought a great deception in this country as an antichrist spirit, which he is. Not the antichrist, but antichrist spirit. It opened the door to some more sinister schemes, lust and perversion. And after his second election, it started a new age of darkness in 2012. In fact, that's why the Mayan calendar and all the uh, Inca calendars and all of that said that they would come to an end, that the world would come to an end in 2012. But it really didn't come to an end. It was the beginning of a new age of darkness. Evil and wicked. They've all come out of the closets. They don't care no more because they know time is short. Attacking the light, bringing great division and deception, and now judgment. I want to share with you something very important. And this is about the, um, Revelation 12. It's that the, verse, the first verse describes a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon, and under her feet, a crown of 12 stars on her head. Revelation 12 sign shows the woman represents the constellation Virgo, which is associated with virgin. And the crown of 12 stars represents the nine stars of the constellations. And Leo, Lion of Judah. Conjunction with Mercury, Mars, and Venus. The moon appears to be under the feet of the constellation Virgo, and this is going to happen this month, September. And the sun will be passing through the constellation, what is meant by the woman being clothed with the sun. The second verse of 12, of the 12th chapter of Revelation, goes on to say that the woman was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. This will be fulfilled because the planet Jupiter, which is a representation of king, will be uh, traversing the constellation after having undergone an apparent, what they call a retrograde motion coming back. After entering what Virgo's womb Jupiter exits the lower power of the womb 42 weeks later, or what we might say nine months. That means it's associated, which is a, a, a approximately the length of a woman's gestation, whatever it is. Yeah. It was also discovered that the apparent retrograde of Jupiter in the womb of Virgo was preceded by a comet. Now, this happened nine months ago. Is everybody with me? Amen. On December 23rd, 2016. So conception started September 23rd, 2016, and birth is going to happen September 23rd, 2017. Everybody okay? Amen. This will be the, in fact, they've nicknamed, okay, this, this comet was preceded by a, uh, uh, let me know. Oh, this comet is also called it's a Comet B or, or Sorvis, which is being called the Conception Comet. Is that powerful or what? Because <laughs> it's associated with like the seed. This comet tra travailed or traveled from the lions, the, from the loins of the constellation Leo to the womb of the constellation of Virgo just before the entrance of Jupiter into the womb. This is what the whole picture is going on up there. This comet represented a divine insummation of the woman, which sub subsequently produced the male child, Jupiter, which is known as the king. This will be the comet's only trip through our solar system. It is no other solar orbit. The revelation sign coincides with the high holy day of Rosh Hashanah, of the Jewish calendar. Again, everything coincides with the Feast of the Lord. Now, this feast is known as the uh, Feast of Trumpet, and it's also known as the Jewish New Year. So this month is the beginning. Is, that's why everything in the Jewish calendar, the, the, uh, the Jubilee year and all everything else is coming to an end, and we are going to be starting a whole new year. This whole new year is going to set up a whole new season called the Return of the Messiah. 
That's what this all is all about. You are the generation of his return. He will be coming soon. Oh, glory. Now, the Feast of Trumpets is the first fall feast, and its timing is traditionally based on visibility of the new moon, which is in 2017, and is expected to either begin on September 21st or the 22nd and 23rd. But there's, they're believing right now it's the 23rd. Um, the Feast of Trumpets is a Jewish New Year celebration, and in this case, marking the end of 5777. Five, seven, seven. Now, five is a representation of grace. Seven is a representation of complete and perfect. Now, you have three sevens representing the Trinity. Remember, Jesus was on the cross and said, it is finished. I'm telling you, it is finished. And then now we'll be entering five, seven, seven, eight. Eight represents new beginning. It's a new season we are entering. It is the season of the return of the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the Feast of Trumpets in Jewish tradition is to be a day when the dead will be resurrected <laughs> and judgment will begin. That's how they see it. While we believers and, and many of the Christians believe that it is going to be the period where, which describes a tribulation period from the book of Revelation. The complete astronomical alignment occurs on September 23rd, 2017, over Jerusalem. Everybody got it. Woohoo! Now, there are so many things that are happening. <laughs> we also just had a full solar eclipse across the United States. A full solar eclipse across the United States. And that was a representation of what we call the Passover, where they had 40 days of repentance passing over. In the Old Testament, the Passover was a representation where if the blood was not there, the firstborn was destroyed or killed. So it's an understanding where if you're under the blood, that's if you have a true repentant heart, then you're under the blood. If you're not, then you're not under the blood. Amen. Amen. We also just not only then after that now there will be another return of a solar of a, a full solar eclipse seven years from now. Is this possible that it could be beginning the seven year time? It's very possible. Here's some more things. More. Uh, remember, the, uh, uh, everything relates to Israel as the time clock. Everything relates to Israel as the time clock. 2018 represents the generation. Jesus said, in this generation, I will return. Well, he talked about the fig tree. The fig tree was Israel. Israel had to become a nation. When Israel became a nation, a generation of 70 years, well, 70 plus 1948 is 2018. Also, um, in 1967, Jerusalem became its capital. 50 years after that is Jubilee. Here's something even more remarkable. The President of the United States is now having meetings with the UN. Right now. Right now. It's happening right now. And you know what he's discussing with Israel and Palestine? A peace agreement. He's trying to get them to bring a peace agreement. Wow. <laughs> the UN is meeting. They're in New York right now. As Trump attempts to make the peace agreement to get them to sign. At the Feast of Trumpets, timing represents the beginning also of the rapture of the church. But first, that sign, that seven year sign, signing must come first, and three and a half years later will be the rapture. God willing. 
Again, we are in the beginning of the season of the return of the Lord, tribulation, and the rapture. Now think about something. This is where the signs are so vitally important. Even, you know, the wise men were not Jews. They were Gentiles. And what did they do? They followed the, they followed the lining of the planets which produced a big bright star. These were the aligning of the planets to produce a bright star, and they went and saw the king that was born of Israel. And he was over two years old then. So even among why the Gentiles followed the sign, here we are now Gentiles who are following the sign. Amen? <laughs> I want you to understand that God loves America. His heart is as much for America as it is for Israel. When Israel rejected the Messiah, God had in his heart to bring up America. America will replace the outreach to the world that Israel was supposed to do. That's why, I mean, think about this. What does our Pledge of Allegiance talk about? Uh, uh, under one God? Look at all of our money that spoke about one God, under God we trust, amen? Even our, all of the Bill of Rights and everything was always associated with, associated with our one God. God still honors the United States. It's not over. It's not over. He will bring revival for the United States to reach and be a sign and wonder. United States is going to stand with Israel. Does everybody get it? You, listen, and here's an, I mean, there's so many things that have occurred. It's, it's, it's just phenomenal to me. And let's go to Daniel chapter 8 for a minute. Sign of Revelation 12. Daniel chapter 8. You know, in the Old Testament, it was a shadow of things to come. And, and that's why things are multidimensional, past, present, and future also. When, before God does something, he gives multiple warnings. <laughs> That's why the word says, he who has an ear, let him hear <laughs> what the Spirit says. In verse 23, Daniel 8, would you read it with me? And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressions have reached their fullness, as transgressions increasing. Yes, yeah. A king shall arise having fierce features who understands sinister schemes. Now, I want you to understand that this king that arose already was Obama as a shadow to come, as a shadow for a forerunner. Has everybody got it? Because he was involved in sinister schemes. People have no idea what this man was doing. They have no idea the wickedness of this man. And before, let me share this with you, that on December 23rd, 2016, the day of conception, he convinced the UN to put Resolution 2334 in to come against Israel as anti-Semitic. He was against Israel, and he is not a Christian. He is Muslim. But because the people were so blind and caught up, they missed everything. And it's because I truly believe because the church didn't arise. In fact, much of the church voted for this man to get an office and didn't even know they were promote, putting in office an antichrist spirit. Verse 24. His power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, and he shall destroy fearfully and shall prosper and thrive let me tell you, this guy took the most luxurious vacations than any president. He spent more money on his vacations than all the presidents put together. 
He shall destroy fearfully and he shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. Through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule. Did that happen? Very much. He shall exalt himself in his heart. He was, he was very narcissistic. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, which he did at an inauguration. He, he mocked the Bible. In fact, when he was being inaugurated in his second uh, election, when, he, when the, the beginning person uh, spoke about God, the whole place booed God. Booed God. Because they're anti-Christ. But he shall be broken without human means. And the vision in the evenings and the mornings, which was told is true, therefore seal up the vision for it refers to many days in the future. Now, in preparation. Again, this was a shadow of the things that would come. In James chapter 5. Hallelujah. James chapter 5 and verse 1. <clears throat> he says, Now come, you rich, weep and howl for your m miseries that are coming upon you. Your rich are corrupted. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure, in luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in the day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Therefore, be patient, brother, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth this precious fruit of the earth is known as the body of Christ Amen. waiting patiently for it and until it receives the earlier and latter rain which is coming you also be patient establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is what at hand the coming of the Lord is at hand Hand. Again, the fruit of the earth is the body of Christ. It is the church. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. In verse 1. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1. Let's speak it together. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains and upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, as a what? Pregnant woman. Does everybody see this? Is that what the sign is having this month? Yes. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of the light, sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing." 
He's talking about the day of the Lord. And Daniel chapter 9. This is exciting to be alive for this to be happening at a time. You and I are alive in this realm and know this. This is phenomenal. This will never, never happen again. Never. Oh, God help us. <laughs> Daniel 9, 26. <clears throat> and after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood of the enemy. Until the end of the war, desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, which is seven years. This is the covenant that they're, they're working on right now. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he shall bring an end to the sacrifice and offerings, and on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In other words, the Antichrist will make a covenant. The spirit of Antichrist will make a covenant. This will be between them. But in the middle, he will break the covenant. Does everybody understand that? And that's also not only in the book of Daniel, but in the book of Matthew. So the Middle East, there'll be a seven-year treaty. It will be broken in three and a half years but in the beginning of this signing will start tribulation. People won't even realize we're in tribulation. Do you understand that? They'll just go about their daily lives. Things will start slowly in progression. How do we know? Maybe it's already been signed and we don't even know it. <laughs> we may be in tribulation right now because it's going to be the tribulation and associated with Joseph where there were seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. But it could be three and a half years of plenty and three and a half years of famine. Because the wrath of God doesn't hit until the final three and a half years. That's when the wrath of God comes. Amen? Praise God. Go to Revelation 12 again. And verse 3. And it says, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars, which are known as angels of heaven. Why? Because um, you have Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. They're all in charge of the angels. So a third of the angels will follow one, each, either one of them. So we got it. So that's why it says, and he drew a third of the, angel, a third of the stars because a third of the angels are going to follow, have followed Lucifer, all right, from heaven and threw them to the earth. And a dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now we know the woman represents Israel. Amen? And we know that the woman represents Mary, but in this, it's Israel. Okay. Verse 5. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Did that happen? Yes. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, we see that the great dragon attacked Israel, attacks Israel and the church, but the church <laughs> will be removed. Watch, verse 6. The woman did what? Fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by who? God. 
that sh they should feed her there 1,262 days, which is three and a half years. So again, Israel will be attacked, and so will the church be attacked. But then God will remove us and protect us for three and a half years. Does everybody see that? And we'll come back to that again. And we then will return with the Lord after three and a half years. But again, we will, I truly believe that we will not be removed until mid-tribulation. Because that's when the abomination hits. Because that's when the son of perdition will be revealed. Because he will expose himself in mid-tribulation by stopping the sacrifice, by breaking the covenant, that seven-year treaty. He will show himself. The body of Christ will be removed and the wrath of God will come. Zechariah. Verse 14, or chapter 14, I'm sorry. Whoa. Chapter 14 in Zechariah, is everybody there? Behold, the day of the Lord is coming. And your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather all the nations to the battle against Jerusalem. This will be Armageddon. The city shall be taken, the houses riffled, rifled, and the women ravished. Half of the city will go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be caught, shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. Do you remember when they were on the Mount of, Mount of Olives and the disciples came to Jesus and they were on the Mount of Olives and they said, Lord, when are these things going to happen and what is the end of the age? And he explained to them everything while he was on the Mount of Olives. That's why he will return to the Mount of Olives. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem, uh, on the east and on the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west, making a very large valley. Half of the mountain shall move towards the north and half towards the south. Then you shall flee through the, my mountain valley. For the mountain valley shall reach Azel. Yes, you shall flee in, in, as, you, as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Yusa, king of uh, Judah. Thus says the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. That's when you and I will return. And it shall come to pass in that day that there will be no light. The lights will diminish. It shall be one day which is known to the Lord, neither day nor night. But at evening time it shall happen that it will be light. And in that day shall be that living water shall flow from Jerusalem, half of them towards the eastern sea and half of them towards the western sea. And both summer and winter it shall occur. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And in that day shall be the Lord is one and his name is one. So we see the area of where you and I will be returning with the Lord. That is known as the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is with wrath. Does everybody get it? He will come, but he will not touch the earth. So he came already in the natural. He will come again, but he will not touch the earth. He will stay in the heavenlies and he will call the church out. And he will return and we will celebrate for three and a half years. Then we will return back with him to Armageddon. Amen? Go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, actually, I want to go back to Revelation first. Revelation 12 again. Is 
Is everybody okay? I know it's a lot of information. Revelation 12, verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and a dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now this is powerful. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who has accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. Now, Here's the key right here. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, now this is powerful. He persecuted a woman who gave birth to the child. This is Israel. Again, there is going to be a time. And it's coming. When all what you don't see will become seen. Even the serpent, the devil himself, will be sent into the physical realm. The Nephilims, the demons, all of these will become into the physical realm. People will freak. Many of them will not know what to do. And many of them will. And it says here, in verse 14, But the woman was given two wings of a e great eagle. These two wings represent the rap. These two wings, again, it's refreshing back to two things. Israel and the church. Has everybody got it? These two wings are represented as Moses, amen, and Elijah. These will be the two wings. They're considered the two wings. And it says here, the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. Well, how are you going to fly into the wilderness? It's called the rapture. To her place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half, which is three and a half years, from the presence of the serpent. Again, he reemphasizes this. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman. Now, I want you to understand this. It's not water. These are words. These are words. He's, in fact, he's still doing it right now, trying to condemn. Look at the false media. Look at all the lies and everything that you're hearing on the news and everything that's happening. These are all the things, the devil that is spewing out from all of these antichrist individuals. Listen, if you don't have Jesus, you got devils. It's real simple. You don't have Jesus, you got antichrist spirits. And that's what we're hearing right now, all of this spewing out. And so the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman or Israel that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood, but it ain't going to happen. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of of her offspring. Why did he make war with the rest of her offspring? Because she wasn't here anymore. Who kept the commandments of God. Those are Jews. And the testimony of Jesus Christ. These are backslidden believers. That were left behind. Amen. Praise God. Now. I'm going to go to Luke 21. just to bring a little bit more. Luke 
Luke 21. There are so many things that you cannot deny of numbers and so forth. And I don't have time to go into all of these things, but I want to at least share this one. Luke 21. Hallelujah. And verse 25. Is everybody there? And what's 25 say? And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and on the earth distresses of nations with perplexity. The what? The sea and the what? Waves roaring. You think a hurricane would cause that? Okay. On August 21st, I'm going to represent this to Luke 20, 21. The solar eclipse came. Four days later, Harvey came on the 25th. So everybody see this, the parallel. Luke 21, verse 25. The solar eclipse came on August 21st. Four days later, on the 25th, the hurricane Harvey came. And that word Harvey is representation of a worthy battle, blazing in carnage. That's what that, word, that name represents. So we see that there was not only sign in the heavenlies, amen, but there's a sign on the earth. Oh, glory. I want to go a little further. It says in verse 26, men's hearts failing them from fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heavens will be shaken. They will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree. The fig tree represents Israel and all its trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves the summer is near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till these things take place. Are we that generation? Why? Because the fig tree represents Israel. Israel became a nation in 1948. A generation is 70 years. 1948 and 70 is 2018. Hello. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness and cares of this life, and that they come upon you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. Wow. These heavenly signs... You know, so you see the, the, the earthly signs and, the, and the, the heavenly signs all coordinating together. Amen? Amen? Now, here's another thing I want, I want to talk about, very important. Go back to Revelation 12 for a second. I have one more scripture, so bear with me. Because I think this is very, very, very powerful. Okay, remember we talked about uh, that the woman uh, was ready to give birth, right? In Revelation 12, 1, a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and pain to give birth. Amen. Okay, now, now in, in this, we know that the uh, conception was nine months ago, December 23rd, 2016. Amen? Okay. And so that we know that the birthing will be September 23rd, 2017. But we got to understand now that it's a Jewish New Year now, so to them it's already going to be starting five 778 associated with a new beginning. That's why we are in the season of Messiah's return. And so then we see the correlation of the eclipse and, and the hurricanes and all of the things that are happening. 
Well, the woman in the physical realm represent, uh, represented Mary when she gave birth to Jesus. Amen. Well, here's something powerful. Hallelujah. There is, and, 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 and understand that all of these hurricanes, in fact, um, Hurricane Harvey cost $180 billion. $180 billion. Irma also was in the billions. Now we have, right now, what they call Jose, or I guess in Spanish it means Joseph. All right, now hang, hang this. We have Joseph and Maria, which means Mary. These are two hurricanes. Now, according to the weather technology, all right, these are going to come together and dance. And then it's going to hit New Jersey and Washington, according to the European track model. This dance they call is uh, Fuji Wawa. It's called the Fuji Wawa effect. And this is going to occur on the morning of September 23rd. Is this coincidence? Is God trying to get people's attention? Amen. Where Mary and Joseph are going to dance? <laughs> and then thrust into New Jersey, Washington, according to the European guideline there. No coincidence. I mean, I, I, I can't handle it. These are not coincidences. These are realities. This is what's happening. We're there. It's happening right now. We're in it. We're going to see many things begin to happen. I don't know what's going to happen on the 23rd and afterwards. I don't know. I don't know what the birth is. But I, I believe it's going to be birth and a revival. Because it's amazing how disasters always bring unity. You know? People became unified. They were talking about Texas and everything else and how everybody came together. Even in Florida, people came together helping one another. They didn't care what you believed in, whatever. It was the heart because we all came from the same God. It's unfortunate people worship other gods. Amen? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. In verse 1, and we're going to close here. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as this from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means that that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, which he will be revealed in mid-tribulation. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of the lawless one, lawlessness, is already at work. Only he, that, were, that he is capital because it represents God. He, God. And that he, God, means his body that's here on earth. Jesus is the head. The body is still on earth. The body of Christ is restraining evil. Once we are removed, all hell will break out. Oh, hallelujah. Is already at work, who now is restraining, will do so until he is what? Taken out of the way. That is called the rapture. 
And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will con eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. I'm telling you right now, many people are in strong delusion because they keep rejecting the truth. God will let them go. The rapture is the final sign. It is the final sign before the wrath of God. It's the final sign. So if somebody doesn't make the rapture, they know that they're going to have to go through the wrath of God. They either starve to death, be beheaded, or hide out as far as long as they can. So for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie and that all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now to believe means to follow. Does everybody got it? You can say, I believe the truth and not follow then you're not a believer. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification. Through what? He chose me and you for salvation through sanctification. Sanctification means set apart. From what? The world. So without sanctification, you're not His. To be set through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which were what you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that this revelation would be imparted, that there be illumination with understanding to each and every one, and preparation as this time approaches knowing that we're going home soon. Don't know exactly when. It could be three years. It could be whatever. We don't know. It could be, could be this month. <laughs> Who knows? Things are about to happen, so stay alert. Be consistent. Stay filled with the Spirit. And be watchful in your prayers. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>